Hello, sweethearts, and welcome back once again to Doctor Who Reviews. I'm Freezing Inferno, and today we're discussing the Patrick Tratton story, The Macra Terror. There's a lot to talk about, but before that, let's see who we've got at the table. To my immediate virtual left, she spent $75 to troll me, and it was worth it. It's Kat. <laughs> Yes. And this time we're introducing another special guest. It's Tom. Ba no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> oh god. Although <laughs> there was Sylvester McCoy on that cameo website. And to my immediate virtual right, he spends his time on a screen screaming, "Mirrors do not exist. There are no such things as mirrors." It's Raniac. Classic. <laughs> All right, so Macra Terror. Yeah. yeah. There are no mirrors at Boss Sing Say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good one, good one, good one. Oh my god. <laughs> so, with Macro Terror, we should, uh, at the top, bring up the rather unique nature that we uh, discussed briefly last time, which is that it's a missing story. It is technically so, a missing episode, yes. Well, yes, it is, of course, a missing episode, but there are ways around it, as we'll discuss. So, bit of a history lesson. Back in the 60s and 70s, for a variety of reasons, including but not limited to performance rights, lack of home video, and just plain lack of storage space and need re needing to reuse film reels and whatnot, a whole bunch of old Doctor Who was thought to be, you know, past its sell-by date, and wiped from the archives. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Over the next 50 the years or so... BBC making bad decisions about <laughs> Doctor Who? I'm shocked. Over the next 50 years or so, people have found these episodes all across the world. The most recent find being in 2013, when we found all of Enemy of the World and almost all of the Web of Fear. Two pretty good Patrick Droughton episodes. Good to great, I'd say. But as of now... 97 distinct episodes of Doctor Who from the Hartnell and Troughton years are lost to time. The original four episodes of the Macro Terror being among them. But, thankfully, and, uh, well, I'll, before that I'll say, if you want to look up more, I recommend things we'll link, we'll have it in the description. Uh, SF Debris documentary series, uh, Wiped Junk But Not Forgotten, and Josh Schneers' The Missing Episodes documentary. Both are really good. They detail the history, and they detail what survives and how it's been reconstructed. Because, although the episodes themselves are gone, there were dedicated fans back then who literally, like, recorded the audio from the TV to have their own personal copies. So every bit of audio from the story still exists. And there have been a variety of ways of... Uh, getting to experience the episodes thanks to that audio. You could just do, like, the soundtracks where they take the audio and they add narration, which the Macro Terror DVD has a bonus of this from the 90s, where it's the audio narrated by, of all people, Colin Baker. Yeah. Famous for such quotes as, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't uh, I'm still slightly I'm melted from the fact he thought I was from America, but there we go. <laughs> yeah. I'm still slightly the melted in all of it. Giving. But we're getting off topic. Uh, there's the loose cannon group who takes stills from the episode, match it to the audio, and then add little narration, like subtitles, to describe non-visual action, which are a pretty good way. I've experienced most of those. Or, well, not most. Some of them. Some of them. You have other odds and ends. And then you have animation, which they used to do for episodes where only a couple were missing. Something like, say, The Tenth Planet, where only the last episode was missing. So they put the three that they have on the DVD, and then they do an animation of the one missing one. So they did that for a while, but in recent years, they've been doing animations of fully missing episodes. So far, we've got ones for Power of the Daleks, the Macro Terror, which we're covering today. And the UK has the Faceless Ones, but it's not out in Region 1 yet, not till the fall. I'm going to be getting that, because the Faceless Ones is pretty good. And I think in, sometime in August, they're releasing Fury from the Deep. So you should mention that, because it's funny that we're recording this today, because literally this morning, 
They oh. announced that Fury from the Deep is coming out on September 14th. Okay. Hey. Yeah. yeah, that's a uh, interesting. I've never actually gone through Fury from the Deep. I hear it's good. What a coincidence. That's one of the days I need to go into court for jury duty. Oh, fun. Yay. What a coincidence. Actually, I'm quite September. excited. What a coincidence for me. September 14th means what is absolutely it? nothing. What is it with this podcast that I said it sensitive information? God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Well, we're still waiting for that C and D from Big Finish, but I need to block a picture there. of Ken from Super Smash Bros. Ultimate on, on the screen or yeah. something, do a thumbs up. But anyway, luckily for us, someone decided that the Macro Terror was fitting enough to do an animation of, so we have four lovingly crafted, reconstructed animated versions yeah. of what might have been on screen. And I, I just want to say right off the bat that the animation job they do is really, really, really good. Now they they have two versions on the DVD. I don't know which one you saw, color or black and white. Color. 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 Yeah. See, I'm I'm a, I'm a purist, so I always just surround the black and white ones because that's how it would have looked at the time. So, but you know, it's it's fine either way. I wanted the full experience they were offering, so I put the I, I watched the color one. It's but... funny because la- last summer I watched the reconstruction of Marco Polo, which is an old First Doctor story oh, wow. where they tra- that's a deep where they cut. travel with the. Well, they travel with Marco Polo, but the reconstruction was made with full color stills, and the guy introducing it said, and if you want to experience the story in its original black and white, just simply turn down the color on your television set. <laughs> <laughs> Which, or if you've yeah. got a DVD and you put it into, into your uh, PC, switch VLC media player to grayscale. There you go. Well, I, I, I didn't know how to do it on my tablet, so I dealt with it. <laughs> I, I watched it in color. It was Fair like, enough. It was an interesting story, but it's not the one we're talking about today. We're going to talk about the I, I will say, I will say that I do have some slight problems with the animation, but uh, they're pretty much situational, where there are sometimes, like, there's uh, at one point where, um, her name's Polly, right? Yes. Yeah, Polly. Well, at one point, there's a, a scene where Jamie is yelling at a guard to stop her, uh, to get it her, bleh, to get his hands off of Polly, and the actual animation is just there goes Polly, there goes Jamie, guards right behind them. Nobody's touching Polly. So it's little things like that. that but if it was like that on the actual the episode Telesnap, hmm. that's not really their fault. Hmm. I don't know. I haven't actually looked at well, still, I'm, I'm, saying, the... I'm still saying that they, they have some freedom of animation. They could have done, you know, something. Yeah, and that's. Actually, goes into a, into a criticism I'm going to have a bit later on with a rather important um, character that recurs a lot. Well, we'll 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 get into all that. But you can let's probably get guess what I'm talking a... about. Uh, maybe, but we'll see. Yeah. So, episode one uh, actually opens with the teaser from the previous story, which is the Moon Base, which is a Cyberman episode. Which is inappropriately named. It should have been called the Egg Base, but I think. Yes. Yeah, but then it would have, they would have got sued for copyright. I'm sorry, the Hedgehog. <laughs> yeah. It, it, the Doctor basically wheels out this thing called Time Scanner to scan the. It's basically just there to give a teaser for next week, and it's never brought up again. But they see big, scary crab claw on the the monitor, and that's your teaser for. Next yeah, time. and here's the interesting thing on the animation: that's in black and white. Oh, even that's in yeah, black. that's in okay. black and white, and then it goes to you color. Know, that's an interesting way of doing it. It's essentially Wizard of Oz. Us. Okay, kind of like how two doctors did last time. Yeah, yeah. and I, I was I was wondering what was yeah. up with that strange opening scene, and now you've told me it was from the previous episode. It all makes sense now. Yeah, that's just the lead. Because like, oh, have I, have I actually put on the wrong the wrong part on the DVD? No, no, it's right. I thought it was just a very apt cold open, so it worked for me. Yeah, they, they just took it and made it like kind of a new series-esque cold open. Yeah, I like that decision. It works. It works. It's funny because I think the Moonbase... I'm pretty sure the Moonbase episode 4 is another missing episode that was animated by a completely separate team back when that DVD came out. So it'd be funny to yeah. go back and compare like them animating it versus this team animating it. But then we get our, our credits, which actually is a bit of historical importance. This is the first story to feature the second Doctor title credit scene. 
up until now, just use the uh, William Hartnell era one and his theme, which we've seen in the chase. Mm. This is the first one to use that. So that's interesting. But it's the same theme still, isn't it? No, it's a little different. It's a little different. It's got a little, it's got a little reverb added to it. I don't know how to Is it like it, one of the first ones to have uh, Patrick Chowton's face sort of zooming out yeah, on that's, us? That's, really that's what they cha- yeah, that's what they changed. Yeah, that's what they changed. Because I'm not asking that question for editing purposes at all, no. <laughs> no, no, clearly not. I'm totally not finding out if I have to find yet another version of the damn theme music. Not yeah, at all. Well, I'll, I'll get you the Patrick Trouton theme music. Don't you worry. You're too kind. So the plot, then. Happy Colony! Oh, God. There's a marching band. There's a... Oh, please please don't. I just got it out of my head. <laughs> So this is all very, God damn it. yeah. It's the the soundtrack for this is like it's it's like sixties synth. Boop 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 boop. It's so upbeat and peppy, but you know, there's this there's sinister undertones because this is actually like a, a, a fucking dystopian. Oh, it's nightmare. really it's really sinister right from the beginning. <laughs> but it's a happy colony with happy people, except there's one person who's not so happy. Yeah. Yes, and it's uh, it's Rock from Naruto. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say Rock Age Paulie that. Cause... Oh my god! <laughs> well, uh, seriously, Rock... the haircut that they gave him—I'm yeah, sure that's actually in the episode, but also, oh my god, Rock, Rock we have yeah. seen some shit. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, namely like a uh, big monsters or something. And he's he's ranting, he's raving, he's he's running away from security guards, and the chief oh, of police, God. Ola, who I hate. Oh, yeah. Okay, like uh, it's animation. I'm sure they modeled this after the actor. But was the direction was like the direction in rehearsal back in the '60s? Like, okay, so you're playing the part of Ola. What I want you to do is not wash your hair for a week. I don't know about his hair, but I have seen pictures of the actor, and it's spot on. He, he just looks like the greasiest motherfucker. Yeah, and the, and the other major character. I, I will say, it's a little <laughs> offensive because of the way they messed up his teeth in the animation, which I'm sure is true to real life, but also, come on. Come on. It was well, this is a British 1960s Britain. TV series. That'd be one guy with bad yeah. teeth. It's Britain in 1960. Everyone had shitty teeth back then. I'm sure you, I'm sure your dental health is better in the modern day, Raniac, but... <laughs> Says the man with free fillings. Uh... <laughs> 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 well, I, I'm still saying that, again, it's animation. Mm. You have some allowances for animation. That's why things like the Mac record look so good, because oh, you don't we'll have any real limitations. They other do look than great. What the... The macra oh, do look great. we are no. going to get to the macra, and you're going to laugh your shit. But for now, uh, yeah, Medoc runs out. That's the guy's name. He's not right. His name's Medoc. He runs out, the guards are after him, and now the TARDIS arrives, and this is hilarious because having just seen a giant goddamn crab monster on the television screen, Jamie immediately walks out of the TARDIS holding a big stick. Yeah. <laughs> I like Jamie so much. Oh, Jamie's Jamie. fantastic. He's great. And then there are the other companions, Ben and Polly, who are pretty good. Uh, I don't know what... I've seen they more than exist. one story with them, but... Polly's fine. Think ben, them? yeah. Now, Ben has a pretty uh, detailed plot in this one that we'll go into. Like, I, I don't mind Ben. He's, he's fine. They're, they're fine. Yeah. They're, they're not the worst companions. They're not like, the best companions ever. They're... For the second movie, things along. I'll agree with that. Hmm. Let's just be fair to Ben, too. Half the episodes, he spends his time, you know, heavily brainwashed, so... He does, he does. He does, yeah. So, that's... It gives him something to do. Coughs and yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, so... But the other thing is that they, they, they encounter Medoc, and they subdue him. They subdue him in a real epic struggle that the animators didn't, and either the animators didn't animate or they didn't like show the. I don't know. It's with these it was missing the episodes. It was probably the latter. It's. 
I mean, it's it's the sixties. I mean, I know they they have a set made of tin foil that wobbles, but you could show a guy like wrestling. <laughs> it's no DQ. So, it's no DQ. <laughs> what do you mean, ring the bell? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's like the, one of the few. Well, to be fair, ones. it was also the '60s, so they wanted things to be gay, but not too gay. Well, we'll get to that, but uh, yeah. So basically, they helped subdue Medok and the captain of the guard, Ola, that greasy motherfucker we all hate. Yeah, shows up. <laughs> he's such a shit. He's he's a good he's a good villain because there was nothing likable about him at all. From the way he looks to the way he acts to various happenings that involve him later in the in the story that we'll get to later, he's just a shit heel. He really, which is interesting considering once we find out the nature of the colony. Yeah, that he's an unlikable shit heel. But well, we can we can debate on that. You will always find but, uh, people in any society who identify with the boot. Basically, but capturing helping them capture Medoc. Gets them invited to the colony for hospitality, which leads to an interesting line as they walk into the control. Well, the boss of the place is called the pilot. They go into his office and they hear a hap, hap, happy propaganda work song. <laughs> as a doctor, well, and I and I know he's using the old meaning of the word, the synonym, but he just says, well, this is gay. Yeah, he's meaning the word happy. Yep. The meaning happy. Yeah. Which I'm not gonna I hold that against it because it's the sixties. Yeah. I'm I am i am not I'm not sure if that word meant what it means now it in did 1967. Not. It, it did not. Okay. No. No. Okay. That so, sort but, of thing was not really talked about. If it was, it was usually referred to as queer. Okay. And then slowly queer, queer and gay became homosexuals, um, yeah. I and, forget the exact term, but it's like friends of Dorothy, I think. Yeah, friends of Dorothy. Ah, yeah. You're absolutely right about friends with Dorothy. Yeah, yeah, okay. Friends of Dorothy, but not you friends know, with Dorothy. Uh, it's just some. It's just something in this day and age to have a voice clip of Patrick Chapman saying, "Well, this is gay." Yeah, but I'm not going to hold that against the story because. Oh, I don't hold it against the story. They're, they're trying to go for authenticity of the '60s, and that mm-hmm. there is nothing offensive yeah. about that line in that context. There's another really great bit once they're getting the full hospitality treatment. Or somebody suggests uh, the doctor get his clothes cleaned, and the look on his face is just what? He is offended. He is offended. This is this is also something I should talk about. This caused a bit of a kerfuffle back when the animation came out. They actually cut a scene from episode one. Uh, basically, they put the doctor through a clean machine and make his clothes all nice and clean, and he immediately jumps into another machine to dirty his clothes back up. Yeah, I can understand why they kept that out. <laughs> they, they, I think they cut it out for like time and budget. They had to animate the whole. Set. Yeah, like, because you know, it, it doesn't add anything to the thing. It's, it's a neat little yeah. bit, but it's a cute scene, but it doesn't add anything. I can understand why they cut it, but you know, fans absolutely. Like, they can't see out. This isn't the authentic reconstructed episode from 1967. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, Ian Levine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Jesus. The correct response to Ian Levine, by the way, is just to laugh. Uh, <laughs> fucking Levine. Ian Levine. I mean, he, did, <laughs> he did find some missing episodes. I'll give him that. Uh, but that's about all I'll give him. I can't believe that guy went to my old school. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, me finding that out. That was, a, that was a moment. That was a moment in time. Oh, God, okay. Oh, he came for so, Blackpool. He didn't go to my old school. He's son of a bitch, he did. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, um, we meet this character that I was referring to earlier for the first time. We see the pilot. Now, this guy was played by a uh, longtime English actor Peter Jeffrey. Spitting image again, by the way. Having seen so. Peter Jeffrey and other things like The Avengers, looks just like him, so that's perfect. Let's perfect... Okay. Incoming message from the big giant head. Ah, uh, yes. The controller. Controller. Getting used to seeing this guy. <laughs> He's just a big static head. And that's not like, well, 
if you were watching the reconstruction, everything would be goddamn static. But no, that's really what yeah, they're going for. It's just a static picture of a man. Yeah. And he shows up again and again and again. It gets hilarious as time goes on because, like, they're, we're uncovering the secret hidden thing of the colony. And the doctor's like, Pilot, I need to show you something that will shock the very core of this colony and make you distrust everything. And then the controller will come in and say, uh, ur- Urgent message from the controller. Uh, everyone is to stay where they are and work and not question a thing. Um, um, I'm, I'm totally in control. Yeah, totally, basically. Totally in control. <laughs> and it's, um, it's, it's, it's basically like Wizard of Oz. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. <laughs> Well, not quite the man behind the curtain, but we'll get there. It, it's kind of funny. Um, this has a, a lot of the themes from 1985, which that book did not come out until... 1985? 19... Four. 1985 is a soap by pulling the soup. You, you, you mean 1984? 1984 is a book by Joshua. Orwell. Whatever. Whatever. Also, also, that book came out in, like, 1948 or yeah. something. Yeah, he delivered the reverse so, date, so... Yeah. So that's then. So that is the thing that they could draw on, you know, Orwellian dystopia. And they definitely do. Yes. They do. They do. It's yeah. very on the nose. But the point is, this, Look, this controller. I got confused because there's also a book called 1985, okay? Okay. okay. You were, you were one year off, it's fine. I'll, I'll, it happens. Go, go off, Queen. I'll do take I your word for it. Do I need to get the evidence? <laughs> no. Do I need no. to get the evidence? No, no, go off, I'm Queen. To... It's fine. I'll take your word for it. Nope. 1985 nope. does not exist. There is no such thing as 1985. <laughs> nope. Fuck you. It's there. Uh, yeah, it's there. Oh, Anthony Burgess. Anthony Burgess. Clockwork Orange guy. Intended a tribute to 1984. I see. Yes. Uh, but getting back to the uh, to the plot then, because that's completely thrown me. Uh, yeah, the, the controller. Up, no he basically words. turns up, and it's always the same day animation every single time. There's a jingle to accompany to uh, announce his arrival. And then he just disappears uh, nah, again. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, it sounds a bit like that. <laughs> Getting used it to that because it happens like so many times. It sounds like we're waiting for a, like a, a subway or a metro train to come up because all I hear is do 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 do. I just make. It, I, I also I just kind of love the funny. accent. I also kind of love the accent of the other guy on the PA. I, I can't replicate, it, but it's just it's almost like American workstation number five is ready to go. Or some shit. I like wonder that. if that if he wasn't in the original episode. I I assume he is. I'm I'm pretty sure they're just taking the existing audio track of the episode. That whoever it was, Graham Strong, I think, is because they, they do occasionally have little bits to it. Like there was there was a vampire electricals poster in one of the <laughs> one of the um, animation oh, yeah. instructions. Oh yeah, visual th- visual things is fun. That makes me think of a, a funny gag from the Faceless Ones. Uh, spoilers for the Faceless Ones uh, animation. Where at, at one point in the background they add a wanted posters, and it's a wanted poster of Roger Delgado, and then a wanted poster of Sasha Dewan. Nice. <laughs> so that's really cute. I, I like I like that. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Medoc is being shamed by the entire colony. He's being dragged away by Ola, an old friend of and his, he- who I think his name is Questa. Something like uh, that. Sort of stops yeah. and, and says, you know, where have you been? We're, we're having this reception for, to welcome the strangers. That's the doctor and company. We're having, yeah, they keep calling them the strangers. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you, um, that would have been a good title for the, for, I'll say a title for the so- story as well, the strangers, but, um, mm-hmm. kind of surprised there hasn't been a Doctor Who sto- so- story called the strangers. Well, there's an, like an unofficial Doctor Who knockoff called the stranger with Colin Baker. Well, that, that doesn't really have much to do with what we're talking about here. So, basically, Medoc is just, like, a conspiracy theorist at this point. He's like, have your fun, but pretty soon you're all going to be killed by these fucking monsters. He's a, Toilet he's a sw- green is people! He's a swivel-eyed <laughs> loon, basically. Which, uh, and this is fun, because this is quintessential Patrick Troughton. The one guy raving and ranting about like monsters and bad things in the colony and the doctor is immediately invested and interested in talking to this guy. Yeah, he breaks him out of prison. <laughs> it's it's really cute. I, I really like that about Patrick Troughton. Is that, you know, he's kind of a goof, but he does have a certain plot of stuff. Like, there are many, many doctors who take their cues from Troughton. Seven, Eleven. Yeah. So I haven't seen a couple of the stories of, of Troughton that still survive in, in, in full, like Enemy of the World and 
Tim the Cyberman and the War Games. I think his characterization here is pretty consistent. Oh, yeah. This is uh, still semi-early days for him, too. This is still his first season. Yeah. Yeah, it has to be, because Ben and Polio carries over from the uh, from the first Doctor. Yeah. This is a So, so Maydock escapes, he just pushes over the Doctor, which is quite funny. Yeah. The Doctor's <laughs> like, okay, hang on, I'm going to let you out. I just want like, fuck this, I'm out! <laughs> Uh, they want they want to uh, imprison the doctor for this, but he points out that well, I didn't actually let him escape. He he got the jump on me, and plus I'm the one that, that got him here in the first place. So why would I let him go? They just accept it. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's and talk it's... of um there's talk of of um correction, which is not creepy at all. Ooh, dystopia. But <laughs> another thing we get around here is uh, an inter- an important fact is that the colony mines gas. For some reason, mm. which is weird because, um, from what I understand about giant crabs, usually they're more interested in harvesting jellyfish jelly. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the doctor goes to sneak out to uh, continue to talk to Medoc because he's really interested in what the man has to say. And this is a lovely thing. Once he comes back to Ben, Polly, and Jane, he's got his recorder. Yep. Oh, uh, Ryan, have you seen Power of the Daleks, the animation? No, but I know about his recorder. Oh, he's such an asshole with that recorder in that one. He's just playing it nonstop. He's just this erratic, weird guy. And to, ben, who, like, to be fair, it's a recorder. Anybody who learns to play the recorder is automatically an asshole, <laughs> including little kids. Because I, I know this because I had to learn to play the recorder. And I had to learn to play fucking hot cross buns, and I spent half the time bored out of my mind and just making played it, the loudest played the recorder to the thirteen. Could. Fuck you, cat. I, 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 I they made me play the school, but oh that yeah, mean they I made you play, play it. They made you be an asshole, Jerry. They that don't mean I learned how to play it. Well, look at you, you goddamn I, loopholes, getting out of it here. I don't is... think anybody actually learns to play the recorder. They yeah. just happen to find sounds that somewhat make a song. What? Yes. Yes. It's it's like that... Uh, have you guys ever heard the recorder version of the, that uh, My Heart Will Go On song? Oh, no. <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> to, to be fair oh, to, to, be fair to uh, younger me, it, it was... Um, I was encouraged to do something uh, for, for the lunchtime hour. Like extracurricular activity, it was either a recorder or sport, and I was not doing sport with my coordination. So... Oh my god! I, I, I Wait, hang on, hang on, way. hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Fares, did you just say you haven't seen that recorder song? No, I have not seen the heart will go on rendition. In okay. Recorder. Once, once we're done with this, I'm going to link it to you because it's fucking amazing. Oh god. I, I can kind of hear it in my head. Like, I know how it sounds. I know how it sounds. I have like, heard it, and it whatever is... Whatever you're thinking, whatever you're thinking, is probably spot on. It's an experience. I'll just put it that way. Okay. So, uh, again, I, I should mention the recorder again, because that leads to a wonderful bit where uh, everyone has to go to bed for the night, because uh, apparently this colony works on uh, curfew. Yeah. yeah. Which is funny, because it's a hap hap happy colony, but all is like, oh, go out at night or you'll be killed. Ooh, but hey, if it's a happy, happy colony for fun... Well, you'll die with a smile on your too? face, so there's that. Is, is, is this the Happiness Patrol or Macro Terror? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Love that but, joker. <laughs> <laughs> love that. No, but there's a shot I really love. I don't know if they embellished it or this was in the original, but the doctor is sitting on his bunk in his quarters and the guard is like, well, okay... Is, I, I think it's it could be the pilot or it could just be another guy. I'm it's not, not sure. a guard; it's just an, another official. Okay, he's just like okay, I'll settle, Doctor. Well, good night. And then you see like the door shut. Then you see the guard walk off. Then you see the next scene, which is the room, and it's just the recorder on the bed and the doors open. <laughs> yeah, he's immediately <laughs> sneaking around at night, which leads to a great episode one cliffhanger because he goes out to find Medoc and like. Uh, an under construction section of the colony to try and talk to him about the giant 
things he's seen, and uh, then they see a crab boy. Yep, this is the macro. We got a crab. We got a crab boy. Yay! The, ma the macro from TV's the from TV's gridlock. Yeah, he's and... looking for his millionth dollar. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! You were said you were gonna do this shit. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, how, how many Mr. Krabs jokes can Cat make tonight? Speaking of million dollars, <laughs> speaking of million dollars, rest in peace, Regis Philbin. Oh yeah, that one hurts. I don't anyway, know if yeah, the macro. I don't know if y'all seen. Now I, I like the design of the macro, but I've not seen the the telesnaps. Oh, <laughs> so I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna deliberately wait until. We talk about the scene in episode two to show you the comparison. Okay. It's because it's it's the most stark, but here they look great. Yeah. They, they're they're rendered. I, I'm pretty sure the whole thing is like CG rendered, but you know, traditionally looks like a traditional animation. It looks pretty good on the I on the animation. It's flash. <laughs> I think flash. it's a flash style animation because um, mm -hmm. the the style of the of the animation that they do highly reminds me of the newer My Little Pony series, which yes, I. Still need to finish that. Well, what, whatever it, it is, whether it's fashion animation or otherwise, it looks really good here. Now we're yes. talking about tar tar cartoon crabs, not cartoon horses. I, I'm ninety-five percent sure there's some sort of sentient crab species in My Little Pony. So, so oh. moving on to episode two, then. Thank you, Lauren Faust. <laughs> so, Medoc is excited <laughs> to have seen this um, this crab creature because now he thinks, he, "Oh, I can prove to the colony I'm, I'm not crazy. I'm, I'm not seeing things." <laughs> that goes about as well as expected. Um, he gets so excited that he actually brings the guards to him. <laughs> and oh, that's a real greasy piece of work here. Yeah. I'll, I'm giving things like, away for later on, but I was very disappointed that nobody punched Ola in the face. No, well... Because he was just begging to be punched in the face by someone. Let Ben do it at the end. That bit of catharsis, that would have been... Interesting. Let the pilot do it. <laughs> oh, that'd be. Yeah, they, they could do it too. Yeah, whatever. Well, the <clears> magic <throat> is that this is animated, so all we have to do is find someone who could replicate the style, and then we can make it ourselves. <laughs> Beautiful. You already spent seventy-five dollars. Don't push it. <laughs> is there's that another little touch? There's another little touch I love, where we get to the we cut back to the pilot in his office once Ola has. Uh, arrested the doctor and me dog for trespassing and whatnot and being out after curfew. And he gets like a call on this thing on this like transceiver, intercom, whatever the fuck, future tech. And once he finds out that it's Ola, he just does this little head shake and it totally communicates a mood of, oh, for fuck's sakes. <laughs> I swear it does. I do love the little bits they've added to, to the animation to yeah. really give it some character. Yeah, I don't know if... I Again, I don't know if they're pulling this from, like, the script or anything like that or any, like, actor recollection or they're just, like, embellishing. I'd, I'd say embellishing given that well, the macro are pre and the macro and some other stuff are pretty embellished. But it's it works, you know? It's kind of like it's kind of like argue, how. I, I could argue that it's not embellished simply because Ola is a security chief, right? Yeah. yeah. Other than Medoc, and you know all the people who work in the gas mines, what exactly is he securing? That's true. What indeed? Well. Oh, yeah. So I'm sure Medoc was like the first bit of action he had in a while. He's like, mm. yes, yes, yes. And then the pilot's mm. like, okay, calm down. Mm. So you're basically saying that Ola was like M. Bison. <laughs> yes. We need you to arrest Medoc. Yes! <laughs> but yeah, the embellishment, I don't mind it. It's kind of it's kind of like, uh, you know, Jurassic Park, how they had to fill in the gaps of DNA. It's kind of reconstructing the Doctor Who like this is kind of like that, where you've only got the audio to work with and any like visual flair or little subtle actor touches. You kind of have to just make up yourself. Yeah. Yeah. They do a but, decent job with that, by and large. Yeah. 
But, but anyway, what's funny is once, um, once me, the doctor comes in, yeah, I love how the doctor when he is brought to the pilot, he just immediately fixates on like his switchboard communicator thing. He's like, "Oh wow, what a neat bit of tech!" Yeah, <laughs> completely ignoring the fact that he's been like apprehended. <laughs> yeah. In, in the shit. But he, he gets away with it from an unexpected source. Meetup comes in and says, oh, um, the doctor wasn't helping me escape. He was telling me to, to give myself up. Which I love because, well, it's a Meetup realize He's saving the doctor and taking the fall himself. And he's also making Ola look bad because when the pilot asks, well, why didn't you say this before? And Meetup just says, Captain Ola didn't give him a chance to. So, so yeah, Me- Meetup takes the fall because he wants he he's saving the yeah, doctor, okay, as you okay. say, but he's also got okay. another reason, hasn't he? Yeah. He purposely <laughs> wants to get transferred to the uh, to the to the mine department. Hmm. I wonder so what that could of... be. Hmm. Hmm. But after all this, uh, the controller pops up, and we get a bit of an uh oh, because. Those strangers are to be subjected to high-powered adaptation. As the controller says, we cannot have criticism from the strangers! Mm. Oh, so the, the controller's just Twitter, then? <laughs> mm. <laughs> Things don't seem all happy-happy in the call, do they? This leads to... Oh, oh God, that... This does also lead to the oft-quoted line from the controller who keeps screaming, Macra do not exist! There's no such thing as Macra! Yeah. <laughs> Which, that's just... Pay, pay no attention to that crab behind the curtain. That's just such an eminently quotable line. <laughs> just, I, I already but, used this, but there are no Macra in Ba Sing Se. <laughs> yeah, I so. Just the desperation of it to scream like he's the controller, but he's like so fierce about it. Yeah. Adamant. Forget it, it, J- forget it Jade. There are no macro here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that does lead to subliminal messaging. This leads to brainwashing. Yay. Yay. Which, you know, which the colony isn't really that good at. Yeah, and, one out of three success and, and, rate. And Jamie, Jamie just becomes the immediate episode of VP here by just completely ignoring it. Which I don't know if it's the episode playing on the fact that he's from like 1745 Scotland that doesn't give a shit, or something it, like it's that. It's just that he has a bad night's sleep, and because of that, his brain patterns don't take to the brainwashing. And Polly doesn't doesn't really get affected by it, but poor Ben. Which yeah. um, I think ben. might be, which there is a re- an interesting reading I can. The uh, colony is a metaphor, a British holiday camp. So the one working class guy gets suckered in by all of it. Because <laughs> Ben is just a sailor, like right. Polly is sort of an upper class. Hi, hi, high campus. Today we're going to execute me up by a firing squad. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> Listen, if you want holiday camp shenanigans, Delta and the Bannerman. Oh God! Delta. One one day we're gonna do that. They one shot day, Ken nice. Dodd in the back. They shot. It's like it's a happy happy, happy holiday camp thing. They shoot Ken Dodd in the back and blow up a bus for tourists. Fucking incredible! What is happy? <laughs> And it did lead to the best Nash line ever. No, no, no. We do not paint, paint the, the baby, baby green. green. Yeah. But uh, back to the macro terror. Um, yeah. Ben gets suckered in by the subliminals and molded into a person who's loyal to the colony and their rules and is happy to work for the good of the colony. And he even changes his clothes. <laughs> yeah. Let us do <laughs> not. The doctor Wait, does well, he does. barely changes his clothes. He changes his shirt, and then he yeah. has like these really tidy little shorts, like white mm. shorts underneath. But he's, his he's wearing the colony's <laughs> uniform, for one better word. Which contrasts to the funny. doctor. Contrasts to the doctor, our anarchist Glee, who immediately comes in with a screwdriver. 
non-sonic. Yeah. And just shorts out all the subliminal messaging gassing things. Much to Ben's consternation, like that's co- that's Colin. There is an episode of the of the sixties TV show The Avengers, which has a similar premise, where people are being um, given subliminal messages in their sleep. In that mm-hmm. one, they don't just they don't smash it with a screwdriver. Like they, they just like unplug it or switch it off. I have a very important question for you, Frez. Go on. So obviously, this could not happen in real life since Patrick Troughton did sadly die before you know the Seventh Doctor came around. But are there any big finish episodes where the second Doctor meets Ace? I don't know. If because that was to think ever of happen, that matchup. if that was oh, to ever happen, God. it would be in a comic book. Uh, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I am going on the TARDIS wiki, and I am going to look up Ace. Well, while you do and, that, I will, I will um, carry on with the plot because there's a rather important scene coming up. So, um. Ben and Jamie are not getting on because Ben is brainwashed. Mm-hmm. Polly runs away because she doesn't like them fighting. Ben says, I'm going to report you all to the pilot. Because he's a snitch at this point. Uh, ben goes after her. He actually captures her. Starts dragging her back towards the cubicles. And then we get another appearance from the big giant enemy crab. Oh, man. This doesn't look quite as good. Oh, okay. this is this is where I get to uh, come in, actually. Once I just uh, oh god. Eh. Well, finish finish up looking it, for the for the ace thing, and then and then you can come in. I don't. If it's think... what I think it is, I actually just saw a picture of what the macro was supposed to look like previously. Yeah, yeah, I I will uh, link that. Okay, Randy, I want you to do so. We're talking about the scene where Polly runs away from Ben and get and they get accosted by Mac. Right? We are, yes. Okay, so in the uh, in the episode in the in the animation, it's pretty gripping and thrilling. And there's a bit where Lee Macra has her by the foot and is hoisting her in the air. Just just pop a screenshot of that. Okay. For editing. Yeah. Let's edit that in. Just just so the audience can see here. So. This is obviously a uh, big thing. The animation is being lavish about it. Ooh, we can really go hog wild. And here is a macra. Ooh, it's a big giant crab threatening Polly. What a, what a thrilling goddamn thing. And this is what I mean by embellishing. Because we do have a little snippet, like maybe 20, 30 seconds of surviving footage from episode two during this scene. And uh, this is what the macro looked like on television in 1967. Okay. <laughs> it's processing. My body is ready. My body is not ready. What the <laughs> hell is that? <laughs> That's a macro. Two, two headlamps. <laughs> two headlamps and an antenna thing. It's just a two head. It's just two headlamps and this big giant like puppet thing moving claws around. And poor Annika Wills is in the middle of it going. I'm oh suddenly God. very glad that they embellished this scene. Well, oh. the, the, the picture that I saw was this one here. And I have no idea if it's an actual one or not. Let's see. Yeah, that, that, I think that's actually the like the macro uh, prop. I think well, that, that doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look too bad, but like, oh. The, the other one does, on. but... Let me, let me see if I think <laughs> macro terror... Surviving clip. Let me let me see if I can get actually get it in motion for. Oh, I got I got I can I can, I can get it in motion for you. Hang on. Here. Oh my yes. god. I'm going to guess it has exactly two points of articulation, which are the claws. I'm going oh, to guess you okay. want to gift this. We're... Yeah, yeah, gift that. Definitely gift that. I'm going to guess you want to gift <laughs> this. I'm going to have to make sure that's muted, and it is. Okay. <laughs> Oh, hey, this is broadcast on my birthday, by the way. Interesting. Oh, my God, what? <laughs> Can you see why Yes, that's it, Jamie. This? Hit it with a rock. Well, then, yeah. <laughs> well, I was oh. definitely right. Two points of articulation. <laughs> oh, she's got a really good expressive face, Annika Wells. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that I will scream... Say, that scream is, it's its not Mel Bush. Uh, you know, I no, give it that's, that's an something A. Else. I, I give it an A-. 
I will say, the costume's not that bad. It looks like a very crusty crab. <laughs> hey. A anyway. anyway. I'm not finding um, any second Doctor Ace shit, actually. While, while you're finding that, Ben, ben um, denies the existence of the macra at first. He's like, I can't see it. But then he can see it, so he helps uh, Polly, and then he got her name wrong then. He helps Polly fight it off and survive. Mm -hmm. They go back to the pilot, where the Doctor and Jamie are already there um, talking to him. And Polly's like, um, I was being chased by this monstrous creature. And, and, and he says to Ben, did you see it? He said, no, there's no such thing as Macra. Macra do not exist. Whoops. Polly then blurts out about the macro and the pal's like, Take them away, they're confined to the pits. Oh god. Oh no, no, actually no, we, we we need to talk about this way more. Oh no, no, you're right. I'm, I've skipped a bit, yeah. sorry. Before yeah, that this is, this is Before great. that, the doctor wants to see the real controller. So the giant face yeah. shoots up on screen. And this is act part of this is actually in the surviving footage that there. I've seen it, yes. Uh, the, yeah. Yeah. But uh they want to see the real controller and so after much poking prime, they eventually cut to like this really old looking guy, but he's not talking. It's like the controller voice saying, "Look, now you've seen him. Now everything's okay." <laughs> and you know, he they're they're making him talk, and he's pretty hesitant. And then he gets a crab claw to the to the neck, and yeah, well, they embellish again. They do like found footage thing where the camera falls down. And you again, why the why they they. Out. Why they do this to him? Because uh, it pretty much just confirms that the the controller is a sca is a sham. Yeah, but like they're gonna confine everybody. Yeah, they, they hand wave anyway. by by turning and, them to and the, the people on the colony are so like brainwashed that yeah. in five minutes they're gonna forget all about it. They they've yeah. drunk the Kool Aid at this point. But it does but that does lead the escalation that confirms Polly's. They're in control. Control. And then they get confined to the pits. So I, I did jump the gun a bit. And that's the end of and that's the end of part two. Yeah. But yeah, this is another scene in Bells. Like I said, well, in the original episode, all you see, and it's in the surviving footage. It's just that guy, and there's like a crab hand reaching for his neck, and he's like, ah. Yeah, I've, I've seen that still image. <laughs> Which is effective, minimalist and effective, but you know, I like what the animation does. Puppets. Yeah. Well, not the puppet, the, the shadows. Yeah. But that leads us to episode three. And this is where the really <laughs> interesting thing really start to happen. So they get confined to the pits to mine with the danger gang. So which, the danger gang. Which I, lo I love <laughs> the line that happens once they, once they get escorted down here. There's another propaganda song. Happy to work. Ha happy to work. And the doctor's just like, oh my god. It's awful. Whoever wrote that should be sentenced to the danger gang. <laughs> Great. So even when he's like captured, he, and he's particularly good in in this in this third part. He's, he's good in he's all just of it. Taking but... the pit. Oh, there's another lovely moment. Yeah, it's the I bit love. I think you're talking about. Oh. Anyway, the danger gang. They're mining gas. They're mining gas. Yeah, and uh, we see a, a familiar face. Medoc is their shift leader. Well, how he's, about that? He's got out of the of the hospital because they can't do anything more for him. So the only thing they can do is to condemn him to work in the pits for the rest of his life, which, as he says, it won't be very long because nobody lives down here for very long. Because the gas is Cheering. poison. Um, they, uh, they have a squabble over who's the supervisor. In the end, the doctor gets the job because he'd be more useful uh, snooping around up top. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um... There's some more embellishment about the gas. There's quite a bit of... I don't want to call it filler, necessarily, but the pacing of this plot is not the most fast-paced. Not really. Well... It's quite meandering in places and quite repetitive in others. Well, we've seen 62 before with the chase. Like, It's, it's not the worst padding I've ever seen. No, no. But, not at all. Like, if this were six episodes, it should be padded out to the max. If there but, were six episodes, I would be quitting by episode three. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Ben Ben then turns up behind the doctor. The doctor knows he's there. 
And he says, you've been sent down here by the pipe to spy on us, haven't you? He says, well, if I were you, I'd keep asking Jamie's way. He's not quite as forgiving as I am. At this point, I wanted Jamie to just lamp Ben so hard. I know he's brainwashed. I know well, he's brainwashed. Actually, I know he's on his He's still acting complete dick. The point of that scene is to show that even though he's been brainwashed, he is still kind of fighting against it a bit. So there is a little hope that he can break free of it. Yeah. And the doctor's pretty patient with him. This is really like you. I, I, I did want Jamie to hit him, but uh, that doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. And then we get to the uh, best scene of the, of the episode, possibly the best scene yes! of the entire thing. The, the math? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, this is so this good. Is... There's, there's, a, there's a lovely little character beat in this. So... The Doctor has got himself some um, some chalk. Mm-hmm. In the animation, it's chalk anyway. Maybe it's a pencil in, in, in the in the original well, version. I, I think... No, it sounds like in the original it was chalk. In this one, it seems to be more of a marker board. He, it's he's one just of writing down calculations on a, on, a, on a board. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the pilot comes something. in for some reason, and the Doctor has written out an entire formula. It's the formula for the gas. It's the formula for the gas. And the pilot says, you've... And the pilot's like, how the f- You've stolen this, haven't you? He said, no, I just worked it out on my own. And he says, in <laughs> fact, I give myself... Ten- and then he says, I give oh. myself 10 out of 10. He literally writes 10 out of 10 on the on the Blank board. Dead. But then he says, oh but God. only three people know that formula. Well, in that case, crosses out 10 and puts 11. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good moment. I love it. I love that little character beat. Mm-hmm. Because it is so, yeah, it is like, so doctor-like. I love it. But yeah, like you said, episode three is a little because I don't have too many notes. Basically, uh, to shotgun through real quick, uh, they plug up another like pipe full of gas and whatnot. And when the supervisor, the other supervisor guy, Fisher, I think that's his name. Yes, yeah. he comes to check it and make yeah. sure, but he gets he gets a whiff of it and he faints. And this is. Jamie's opportunity to take the keys from him. Yeah. But here's there's a bit of ambiguity because Ben is around at this point, so it's like, did Ben see us take the keys? Is he gonna rat us out? I wonder what will happen. Yeah, also, um when um Jamie escapes through this uh, this locked door, this this big strong steel locked door. Mm-hmm. Medoc asks Polly where he's going. He says he's going for the door. He says, "Well, I'm going too," but he leaves Polly, which turns out to be the right decision in the end. But still, kind of a dick move. Well, we'll see. I suppose it's to make it less suspicious that there's, there's only two of them missing and not three. We cut back to the to the door. Then, actually, before this, um, is it a Fisher? His name? Yeah. A Fisher realizes that he's he's not got his keys anymore. Ben says, oh, you must have dropped them. He Ooh. doesn't rat out Jamie. So he did see. He chose uh-huh. not to rat it out. The doctor... Um, well, he doesn't rat out Jamie yet. Yet. Yeah. The, the doctor sees and says, this is a sign you're recovering. This is good. Ben doesn't mm-hmm. know why he didn't tell the official about the missing case. Then mm-hmm. we cut to the other side of the door. And Medoc is eviscerated by a giant crab. Whoopsie doodle. I'm, guess, I'm guessing again this was an Worst embarrassment. decision of the episode ever. Why, you like me, though? Yes, he deserved better. The he most did. he did was he got, like, horribly traumatized by giant crabs, and then he got pretty much villainized by the entire colony. Yeah. Sent to work in the dangerous mines. You know, in the danger zone. It's like, this poor guy... <laughs> Yes, yes, yes friends. Hashtag justice for me, Doc. Uh, it's just this poor guy. He deserved so much better. He and does. Now he's dead, and nobody, crap. essentially, nobody knows he's dead. But he's a supporting character Jamie... in a 60s sci fi, so his card was already marked. Uh, still, still, <laughs> though, all that Jamie finds is a green puddle and the goggles that meet I'm had. guessing that's another embellishment for the animation. Well, he probably, like, found the. Goggles. I like it, but I'm guessing it was an embellishment for the animation. Hmm. Well, I'm still upset. Yeah, and and we have a bit where uh, they once they realize he's gone in the old shaft, they're like, 
Oh, we'll send some guards to go down the old shaft. This is control. Do not uh, go in the old shaft. Uh, just stay out there. Don't do anything. Uh, just keep working. This is turning into the Willy Wonka the Chocolate Factory parody of Futurama. <laughs> the Grunkalunkus. The Grunkalunkus. I would think there's a lot more Do not talk about the, the secret boss. ingredient. What are the armed guards for? Grunkalunkus. Dinner the damn guards. <laughs> <laughs> God almighty. But, uh, yeah, uh, Jamie is stuck in the place, and, uh, then they decide, then the controls order routing the gas into the old shaft. Yes. And Jamie finds the door, but he also finds Crab Boy! Crab Boy! And unfortunately, he broke his knife. Whoopsie diddle. <laughs> Oh, no. He, he doesn't actually have a knife in this one. He probably should have, but um, he doesn't. He took a stick instead of a knife. Bad move. He'll learn that, He'll learn in about 15 years when he goes up against the Suntaran. <laughs> yes. He just stabs it in the leg. <laughs> Character growth. How uh, do we keep doing this? Uh, I really love this shot. I, I'm, I'm certain this is an embellishment where we see a macra bursting out of the ground. <laughs> Probably was an embellishment given it was the sixties, but I like yeah. it. That's it's it's cool. Really, that leads like, us to here, part four now. Take. So um, here's my uh, here's my take on the embellishments. This is all a uh, reconstruction anyway, because unless we find the original in a fucking vault in Nigeria or something, <laughs> like this, like reconstructing it to our best guest. It, best guess is as bit good as we're gonna get. So go a little wild. Make the CG macro. Add this and that. To, they like, they find it in the, buried in the landfill next to thirty seven copies of ET. <laughs> God Almighty! And it's uh, immediately poisoned forever by the copies of ET. <laughs> there is an interesting line. Somebody says I don't know who said. I just wrote it in my notes. But the gas is so valuable to them. So why are they wasting it, pumping it in the old shaft? The doctor. The doctor says it. Okay. The doctor says it. Okay. Yeah, he says the gas but is not to so kill. Maybe it's to do something else. But yeah, the gas, it's not just to kill Jamie. It's for another purpose. It's twofold. Because the Krabby Boys need it. But they're also trying to gas Jamie to death. And that's our part three cliffhanger. Yeah. He's cornered by the crabs. He's coughing because of the gas. And uh, bad times are going to happen. But what are we going to do? Oh, I do like another embellishment. I, at least I think it's an embellishment. Of the macro up, upside down. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I didn't, don't think I caught it at the end of part three, but it's there at part four. So, so how is Jimmy going to get out of this? Well, he's going to get out of this by the help of the Doctor, who um, gets the keys again from a fissure. A fissure is just the goddamn word. Keeping his keys... He is the designated butt monkey. I'm sorry, he just oh, is. <laughs> so the doctor's got the keys again. Through some shenanigans, he locks him out. And starts fiddle-faddling with the valve He and Polly too. stop fiddling with the equipment. And they get some oxygen into the shaft to save Jamie so he can breathe. And this also hurts the Krabby Boys. It's, it's also good because before he locks fish out, He's, like, fiddling with valves, and the fish is like, don't touch that. Why not? That controls the uptake valve. Oh, thanks. That's what I wanted to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's cute. Yeah, another nice little character. I also, I, also like how, I also like how the dude's just literally standing on a catwalk above the doctor, shouting down on him. And when you, you pan out a little bit, you see that there's stairs right behind him. So literally all he has to do is just run down to stop the doctor. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, so, um, over yeah. on the guards turn up again, um, sent by control, because who else? They want to get the gas returned to the shaft, because of course they do. Uh, this allows the Doctor and Polly to escape into the mine. And lock well, the door of the mine. Well, not into the mine. Alright, deeper escape into the mine. The yeah, they escape into like a side shaft thing. Into a pipe room. Into the mine. Which, they which escape they... into what they essentially, they call it a closet. Yeah. But there's but, a whole bunch of pipes in a corridor leading. And while Older and Officia are returning the gas to the, um, to the, into the shaft, the gas boat of the shaft, we get another really yeah. funny scene here. 
Oh, before that, I just want to talk about the uh, when the doctor and Polly go into the little room and they just like push the door shut and these two guards are just pushing back like push the door and the doctor and Polly win. I just found that funny, but this does lead to an amazing scene because Jamie, after uh, hitting a crab with a stick and this working somehow, the gas dissipates. The crabs fuck off because gas good, oxygen bad. I guess yes. And Jamie finds the service elevator. Goes up it, and this leads him to cheer practice. Yes, yes, yes. Which, which is again chilling dystopian propaganda. Cheerleaders will be the control. death of us all. We all love control, and we love to obey. Hey, 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 hey. George hey, Bush hey, was hey. a cheerleader. I rest my case. Oh Jesus! But you know, so you've got all these cheerleaders and the cheerleader in in the foreground, and Jamie is just like. Do, 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 sneaking in the background. But he gets caught and it's like, hey, son, who are you? Uh, uh, you a dancer? Yeah. Yeah, this is great. So, And it leads to Jamie having to dance and he dances the Highland Fling. Which is a real Scottish dance. <laughs> the, Traditional hey, Scottish Perez. dance. But, what? Hey, Perez, why do they call it the Highland Fling? <laughs> because you end it by flinging yourself out of the and he literally does. <laughs> which right into been, Ola. Which would have been a great escape if he didn't do it immediately while Ola was outside. Yeah, but I, I, I do. Why is it called the Highland Fling? Because you fling yourself out. You end it by flinging yourself out the door. I love that. It's I don't incredible. know why it's really called the Highland Fling. It's a real Scottish dance. Oh, uh, but I guess I guess the writer took the pun. Oh, it's a lovely bit of writing. <laughs> it's a lovely it's, bit of writing for Sissy Doctor Who. Yeah. He, he, yeah, he probably he might have known that was a real dancer. Yeah. Way it was. Anyway, the golden snitch that is Ben turns up and um, he, he dots yeah, he on was, Jamie. Wait, wait, he was there in the cheer from all along, just listening. To this. Yeah. <laughs> like goddamn wrangle yeah. from from recess. Yeah. He 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 snitches on Ben, but he does kind of feel bad about it. So you know, he is breaking through, even though the conditioning is. He's starting um, to. And speaking of breaking through the brainwashing, another character is having some revelations. Ooh. So Ola is arguing with the pilot. So, you know, oh, this all happened on your watch. We're not happening on your watch. You're the chief of security. You're the one that's caught this up. So they have an argument. Uh, and and I was like, yeah, we have two, two of the trains are still, still escaped. Said, well, not anymore. They're not because we're right here. <laughs> the doctor and Polly walk oh, yeah. in. We should talk about well, the doctor. We, we didn't mention yeah, we have to mention the scene where they're traveling through the pipe room. Oh, yeah. They, they, the they, they see find, into the controller's room. They find crab control HQ. Oh, my God. Surprise, I was wrong. It was, it was crabs all, all along. along. So the controller yeah, the is actually a macro operating the computer. Which is so wild. how the hell do they get the voice? Is it like a voice changer? Who knows? This, as this... far as I can tell, these things don't even speak. So they must have either... like a voice thing, or a synthesizer, or something. I, don't I, know. I guess it's, it's the future. You can make up whatever bullshit. I suppose you want. it's a bit like in in shows like Power Rangers and and um, Tokusatsu, where the minions are disguised as humans and they can speak per- perfectly fine, and then they they turn into the real thing and they just babble. But, it's a bit yeah, like that, I suppose. As you said, once they discover that, they go back to the pilot, and that leads to that wonderful scene where they're like, oh, well, you can't arrest us now that we've given ourselves up. Yeah. But before that, once he sees Ola and the pilot arguing, the doctor's just complete sass mode anarchist. He's just like, oh, now come on, this is supposed to be a happy colony. Say you're sorry, Ola. Say you're sorry, pilot. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> I love him. He's so good in this. Mm-hmm. But he's trying to get the pilot to uh, reali- to come with him to show him the thing, the uh, crab control center, which leads to control showing up. At- this is control. Uh, uh, fuck. Go back to work and uh, don't listen to the doctor and totally just keep obeying and uh, fuck. Um, uh, shit. Uh- yeah, they're, they're panicking at this point because they, they realize the jig even, is probably up. Even uh, Ben is like, that doesn't sound like the voice of somebody using control. Yes, he's, he's starting he's starting to uh, it's starting to wear off now. Mm. He's returning to his, his usual self. But Control knows what it's... This crab knows human nature, I think. Which is why uh, 
Oh my god. Oh no. Cat, Cat no. We're, put, we're putting it in. We're putting it in. Cat has linked an image. Rainac will put it in. I've put it in already. I, I hate myself for putting it in, but it's there. The macro instructing <laughs> the cheerleaders. Give it up for Colony 15. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, to shotgun through the plot again, uh, the doctor convinces the pilot to come and check out the crab control center. At which point, control the fuck is. Uh, fuck, uh, the pilot is not in control anymore. Ola is in command now. Yeah, so he seems very pleased with this. Oh, Ola just has the most shit eating grin. <laughs> so the pilot gets to see the truth. He gets to see the um the room with all the all the crabs in it. Ola then has him arrested. And they lock them in that cupboard again and uh, try to gas him yeah. to death. Po- Polly and, and Jamie are also uh, <laughs> locked in with them. Uh, the controller, uh, urgent transition from Zord on the, um, the call needs to be evacuated for four <laughs> minutes. And that's our little thing. And, and the, and the controller, I guess, is like, talking to them in the room. There's a, like, <laughs> you're going to be helpless. Yeah. Why are they dead, doing this? Help. Cause the colonists can all hear this. I don't, I'm, I'm, they must have an open channel. Either that or the colon, they know they have the colonists brainwashed and that won't matter. Because I suppose five it's cocky so villain logic that they, they've got to expound on I, their scheme. I'm pretty always... sure that they don't broadcast over the entire area. They, they could probably broadcast... Yes, there isn't a da na 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 before that bit, so I think you're right. But Yeah. So everyone's getting gassed, but lucky that Ben is outside. Hey. And, you know, he, he's he's pretty much face The day is saved. That's the pop of girl Ben. Uh <laughs> So the doctor tells Ben what how to redirect the gas to Crab Control Center. Yep. Yeah. Uh, together we, equals explosion. But which yep. the doc, which the doctor did say when he did his math. But there there is a great oh. bit before that explosion happens where the, the crabs are begging for their life through the through the control through the controller. Oh God. So it's like, stop what you're doing, guards, guards. The guards can't, can't get there, obviously. They're, they're trying to get in. <laughs> but the door's been locked again somehow. I don't even know how they got the keys this time. Control sure as hell ain't in control. No, it's dead because the, the room explodes in a giant fireball and anyone for crab sticks? <laughs> Just one and second. then immediately it cuts to party. Yeah, this is very jarring. Now, I don't know if this was another... Yeah instance where they cut bits out from the episode maybe the audio didn't fully survive or wasn't in good enough quality to do but we just go from explosion to party yeah it's a it's very jarring because yeah literally as soon as the explosion happens it fades out and then it fades back into that stupid jangly music that i hate so much oh my god <laughs> it's the 60s run with it yeah. yeah, but I can still complain about it. So the Doctor and Company get their um, Star Wars New Hope medal ceremony moment where the the, uh, the pilot, I think called him the stranger, the pilot thanks them for saving the colony. He says, uh, from now on, this will be Strangers Day and the dance festival will be held every year and the winner will get the Strangers Trophy. <laughs> Could have thought it was no slightly point. better title. At no point do they go, does, anyone, does someone like go, my name is Polly, you dumbass, not the stranger. <laughs> Sadly, Polly doesn't get a right lot to do in this one compared to the other three. No. The Doctor is playing his recorder because, of course, he is. And he seems to be enjoying himself. And, and then comes up. He's just like, Doctor, uh, uh, they're planning to make you the new pilot. And, and the Doctor's like, like, to hell with this. Let's get out of here straight away. And that's how it ends. <laughs> And that's it. They, they might, in the original, they might have had a teaser for next time. But yeah, they and they cut that out because it would have made sense. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, well. And that's the Macro Terror. Yeah, so it is. Yay. So, uh, let's get some thoughts. Who would you like to go first? Seeing as you're in control here, see what I did there? Uh, How about you do it? I will do that. So, let's get the bad things out of the way first. The main thing is that Ola receives no kind of comeuppance for being a shit heel on screen. 
you can kind of infer that because he's not at the ending party, he's been confined to either the brig or working in the mines. But he might just be off screen and, and uh, nothing bad has happened to him whatsoever. This needed the pilot to punch him or Ben to punch him or somebody to punch him. He deserves some kind of come up with because it's not just that he's a brainwashed uh, colonist. He enjoys what he's doing, clearly. Clearly. Here's the closest thing this has to a human villain. The pilot's he not villainous, villain. he's just he's just misguided and, and brainwashed. Same thing with a fisher. They're just obeying orders, really, for a, for a quiet life. But Ola really revels in it, and he, something needed to happen to him, so that brings it down a pay for me. Also, the plot is quite repetitive at times, the, the constant appearance of the controller, although it does get very funny at certain times. <laughs> now for the good. The animation is excellent. Really high quality throughout. One or two little errors, but I can let that slide. The fact that we're even going to see the episode at all in 2019, 2020 is a massive plus. Patrick Troughton is fantastic in this. He's a, 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 a glee little um, anarchist. And he's goofy with it, and he's an ass to certain characters. That little character beat where he, he gives himself 11 out of 10 is just wonderful. Jamie is great in this too. Ben has a rather nice character arc, although you want to have him uh, get punched by Jamie in the middle of it, but he redeems himself. Polly doesn't get a huge amount to do, unfortunately. She's kind of like the, I'm sorry, Mandip Gill, but she's kind of the Yaz of this story. Oh, no. She is. That three companion shit again. Yeah, but it works better here than it did say in, in, in um, the Chris Chibnall era so far. Yes. But some, somebody's got to be um, sacrificed for, for the sake of the um, brevity of the plot, and it was Polly this time around. And the pilot gets his own little interesting arc. He's a good uh, supporting character. So, yeah, I'm glad this was made into a, an animation, and I enjoyed it. Nice. What did you think, Kat? Well, um... I quite enjoyed it. Um, you know, the animation was nice. I did have a couple of moments where the animation felt a little bit lacking, which could be a problem with, uh, you know, just budgeting or limitations or whatever. So there were some points where I was like, you could have done that a little bit better or you could have added a little bit more. But, you know, I can, I can somewhat understand why they did it. Um, the plot, I felt, was pretty good. Uh, you know, it had that very Orwellian aspect to it, which was fun. Um... You know, uh, the the designs of everything was fun. The characters I enjoyed. I really like Patrick Troughton, which uh, this has been <laughs> this has been my second exposure to Patrick Troughton. So, <laughs> good job, good choice. It's it's wild that we went from your Patrick Troughton journey has been at his last story ever, where he's barely in it, to an animation. Which doesn't really get to show off his physical acting. Would you watch but, other S Second Doctor serials on the strength of this? Yes. Oh, I, I would watch that. it for Patrick Trout and I would watch it for Jamie because they are excellent. I really mm -hmm. like them. Well, it's a good thing those two are basically in the entire routine of his run. Well, yes. Power, of the, Power of the Daleks is the only downer in that because uh, Jamie. Yeah. But it is pretty good. <laughs> it's pre Jamie, isn't it? Yeah. Jamie showed up in the, the next story after, which is another missing one, but is pretty goofy. Is that the Highlanders? Yeah. Yeah. Like, Patrick Troughton dresses up as a maiden one? Oh, I hope, like I hope they turn that one's around animation. Now you said that. Oh, God. <laughs> but anyway, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Cat, please continue. Yeah, go ahead. No, honestly, I really enjoyed watching this. You know, um, I I started watching the first one late last night. I was like, oh, I'll do like one or two episodes, and then finish it off. I got immediately hooked after the first episode, and I just watched the whole thing in one go, which I'm kind of regretting now because I, <laughs> I had I slept in really late today. Oh my god! Okay. But honestly, it was it was worth it. Um, if anybody out there can find you know this episode, I highly suggest you watch it. It's a great way to sort of. I, I wouldn't say that it's probably the best way to get introduced to the second Doctor, but it is one of the highlights, I, I feel. And it really 
uh, help show, I think, what this character could be. Yeah. And you, Fresno, what do you think about it? Oh, I really like this one. Uh, See, there are sort of two distinct modes when it comes to Patrick Troughton. There's Gonzo Troughton, shit like the Mind Robber. And then there's Monster Troughton, you know, Tombs of Cybermans, your Ice Warriors, what have you. This kind of straddles the line between the monster story, but it's also got those weird Gonzo elements. Dystopian, happy, happy holiday camp aesthetic. I really quite like it. The animation is uh, pretty spectacular. Embellishes things, but I don't mind that as much as some other people. Patrick Troughton is just a joy, and he's incredible in this story. Ben gets an interesting uh, turn as a sort of villain for a couple episodes. Jamie, good as ever. Polly, too bad, but I do like Polly in other stories. Uh, she has a bit more to do in some other leave, you know, 60s and the girl one and all that. So there's a little bit of uh, unfortunate stuff there, but uh, this is this is a good. It's solid. I'm really glad they picked this one to animate so lavishly. I'm glad it's out there. Even the reconstruction, which I've seen before, great. But this is lovely. So if you like Patrick Troughton, you should give it a go. It's up there for me. And, uh, yeah, glad you all enjoyed it. Well, thank you for uh, introducing me to it. Yes, very good choice. Next time uh, we get a pick from you, Rainier. Yes, you do. So, um... You might have noticed if you've been paying attention to these reviews we've been doing. Oh, hang on, I'll go ahead and open up a dice. Uh, no, there's no need for a dice. Oh, okay. you actually have one. Oh, mind. I have, I have a great a pick this time, an okay, actual pick, not leaving it up to fate or leaving it up to you. No, no. So you yeah. might have noticed if you've been watching these, um, listening to these reviews, that one doctor is conspicuously absent. We have not oh. done any of the third doctor stories. I had one on my dice roll. Yeah, well, okay. I did too, and that's in a few weeks back, and that's the one we are going to do now, because next time out, John Pertwee starts The Doctor in Inferno. I knew you'd pick it. Which is why you told me I was going to pick The Three Doctors, you liar. Well, I, I mean, I, I knew at the second you... Yeah, you knew at the second, because you have ESP, Burn the Witch. So Inferno, then. <laughs> Funny you said. Fun fact, Whoa. last week I almost picked a John Pertwee episode instead of the two doctors, and then I th- immediately asked uh, Radiac, hey, is there an episode where there are two doctors? And he's like, yes, there is. And I was like... <laughs> yes, it's called The Two Doctors. Yeah. Funny yeah, that. Yeah. And there's an episode uh, with three doctors in it called The Three Doctors. It's amazing how that works. You want to you you know my pick for posterity, just for fun? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's interesting because it's the one right before yours. Ooh, well, maybe we'll get to that another time. Yeah, well, this this will be interesting, I think. I, I did want to do one that we'd already done you and I together, so that not had a couple of choices. This will be interesting, to say the least. Yeah, I'm not going to talk too much about this because I don't want to spoil the big hook. Oh, you, oh, you can't spoil. No, you can't. Do the that. big. Let's yeah. just say the big hook in the '70s was pretty revelatory. Oh, you. Oh, you mean. Like okay, okay, I see. The main, I was, I was, the main layout of the story, yeah. I was I'll, I'll talking go into about, that next week. I was talking about Inferno's gimmick, but yeah. Okay. yeah that's, that's what I mean by, by by that, yeah. Okay. The the main setting of the story, I should say, no more than that. My lips are sealed. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, next time we'll uh, deal with Inferno. All I will say is, if you like Nicholas Courtney, you're probably going to like this this next one. Yeah. <laughs> Oh boy. You're probably really going to like this next one. Guess what? I'm a fan of Nicholas Courtney. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So, uh, yes, join us next then. time for Inferno. And thank you to you for listening to us talk about. Um, and there's a fury from the deep. God damn it! <laughs> the macro terror. About the macro terror. And hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you to um, Fresno for having me and Cat on his show this week. <laughs> Uh, and join us yeah. next time when I yank the reins of control back and we talk about Inferno. And no, I'm not... Inferno <laughs> does not exist. Oh, there is no such thing ever been in control. And no, I'm not referring to the Dan Brown book and film. Thank goodness. 
Hey, that's half of my name. All we need is... Yes. Another reason why I picked it, possibly. It's, it's not. Well, let's just go with it. All right. Until so join us then... next week for Inferno, and until then, bye for now. Bye. All right, I gotta go eat. So yeah, you do that. There is a moth that has been buzzing around my head for the past half hour, and it's pissing <laughs> me the hell off. <laughs> oh my god. Moth, if you come in my water set again, you're gonna die. Imagine if we were reviewing the web plan. If it comes into my line of sight again, you are going to get a murder live on blooper reel because I'm going to crush this thing to death. There was. There was. Oh my god. To my immediate virtual right, he spends his time on the screen screaming. Uh, shit. <laughs> screen screaming. <laughs> okay, let's uh, blooper reel that. And uh, <clears throat> three, two, one. Is that an ice cream fan? I can hear what the fuck? <laughs> what? There's an ice cream fan <laughs> going past the house. Oh my god. Oh great, so we, we, we're done with your interruptions, now it's time for my interruptions arc. <laughs> Go out and get a, get a Spongebob ice lolly. This week, an ice cream fan. Next week, a crow. <laughs> I could have had one of those at the store today and never got it. I, instead, I well, I had a, I have a box. The week after that, some seagulls. Who Who knows? Oh, you know oh, what? That's Steve. actually kind of funny. You, you can always get those ice creams out of ice cream truck, but you can never get them at the stores. Anyway, I please want continue. To be able to eat, I want to be able to eat Sonic's disembodied head. Come on. P please I continue with your point about me not taking the fall. So, um... I, can, I can get a SpongeBob ice cream at the store. But that leads to, well, in this case, I think it's twofold. It's to kill and to feed. Yes, because, they, uh, they are trying to cast Jamie out of existence. <laughs> what the hell? Cat. Yeah. What, what the hell was that? There, what? there was just like a, a, a whirlwind <laughs> just entered the call. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, where were we? I was talking about the gas. Right? I'm just sitting over here trying to breathe because my nose has stopped up. <laughs>